Hello, beautiful souls, and welcome to the Path of Wellness podcast. I'm your host, Nicole Berrios. Welcome to another episode of Wellness Wednesday. I have a theme for September, and the theme, if you didn't know from the last episode, is all about how to optimize or boost your immune system as we head into sick season. And Wellness Wednesday is all about what I'm doing just as an acupuncturist, as a shaman, as a, as a healer to keep myself well in 2023. So all of the tips that I share on Wellness Wednesday are things that I am also doing for myself. What I wanted to talk about today, a really cool way, I think a really cool way to help kind of give you a little bit of an edge during SIG season, it's, a, it's something that I call wellness hygiene. I just kind of invented the term. In my last episode, I talked about how I created an entire course on optimizing your immune system, and then I never released it to the world. So I've been giving the inf- like the same information that I put together in the course, just kind of repurposing it in different arenas. And Wellness Wednesday has been one of them. But like seriously, all the stuff that I put into my immunity course are things that I do for myself. It's part of why I was so inspired to do the course in the first place because there's just so much that you can do to keep your body strong, to stay healthy. And this time of year is one of the best times of year to do it because it's right before the change of the season. And, you know, we're coming down from the, the high sunlight levels of summertime and it's before we get into the stress of the holiday season and the the cold months so and the less sunlight as well um september is just a really good time of year to boost your immune system but i wanted to talk about wellness hygiene today like i said this is a a term that i coined (laughs) what the heck is wellness hygiene well do you remember a few years ago when that thing was happening, the thing we all know about, and all you heard about how to keep yourself well um, before the pharmaceutical companies came in and saved us all. Thank goodness for the pharmaceutical companies, am I right? Yes, this is sarcasm, by the way. But uh, all we were told was to cover your face up and to wash your hands. Like, wow, thank you for that advice. (laughs) As if we didn't already know that you should wash your hands to keep yourself from getting sick. But anyways, that was the advice at that point in time a couple years ago. Wash your hands. Wow, thank you. (laughs) So what I think of wellness hygiene of, or how I think of wellness hygiene is how you keep your physical body um, free and clear of pathogens, basically. And, you know, like washing your hands. Yeah, it is sound advice. It's just also like totally self-explanatory. Like we already knew that. Thank you. Thank you very much for (laughs) stating the obvious. So what I think of wellness hygiene is, is taking it a step farther. And um, pathogens get into the body, like the main, the first lines of defense of like the, the body that keeps pathogens, you know, bacteria, viruses, fungi, whatever, out of the body is the skin, the nose, the mouth. And I guess the throat kind of goes in there too, because it's in between the the nose and the, the mouth. Those are the first lines of defense. So when you wash your hands, you're protecting the first line of defense, the skin. But I also think it's really important to protect the other first lines of defense from pathogens, and that's your nose and your mouth. How do you do that? It's really simple. You just use salt (laughs) and oil. That's what wellness hygiene is. So this is just something that I kind of came up with. It's something that I personally do on myself around this time of year, and I do it even more frequently if I'm starting to feel under the weather. If I'm starting to feel like my throat's getting a little scratchy or I'm just feeling a little run down, I totally up my wellness hygiene routine. So what wellness hygiene is, how you protect your nose and your mouth and your throat from bacteria and viruses. You do saline nasal flushes. 
you do oil pulling, you salt water gargle, and um, you can top it all off with a an essential oil antimicrobial mouthwash. This is this is Nicole's version of wellness hygiene. This takes hand washing to the next level. Like I said, the skin is obviously a line of defense. But yeah, where most pathogens come into the body that get us sick are the nose and the mouth and the throat. So I think it's important to keep those areas of the body clean, as clean as possible. So first I wanted to talk about the, the nose part. Okay. So we, we breathe. There's this, like, I don't know who measured this, like what study was done, how they measured this, but the average adult breathes in 1000 liters of air every single day. Did you know that? I didn't know that until I started doing research for this, this immunity course that I did. It's like a thousand liters. How's that even possible? But it's also super impressive when you think about it, like just the constant flow of oxygen going into and out of your lungs every single day is amazing. But because we breathe in 11,000 liters of air every single day, we are also t- like our noses are constantly taking in whatever's in the air, 11,000 liters of air. <laughs> So there's all kinds of stuff in the air. There's, you know, aside from bacteria, viruses, fungi, there's also pollution and allergens, just all kinds of stuff that goes right up our nose. And I mean, that's why we have nose hairs is to kind of like filter some of that stuff out. But there's at this point in modern society, especially if you live in a city, especially if you live in a dusty city like Phoenix, there's so much stuff that goes up your nose every day. I think it's critical to flush your nose just to give it a break, you know, like just to clear some of the stuff out. And um, yeah, all you need to do to do this is you can use a neti pot if you so choose. A lot of people do. I personally do not like neti pots. I find them cumbersome and I yeah, cumbersome, awkward, and you spill water on yourself, or at least that's what I've done. So I'm not a super fan of neti pots just because, um, I struggle with user error. I just can't use them. What I've discovered works really well for me is a naso pure. It works the same way as a neti pot. It's just, instead of like a, a weird teapot looking thing, it's a bottle like a squeezy bottle with a nozzle on the end of it. And it's like at a weird angle. I'll put a link for this in the show notes, but all you do, you know, it's your um, distilled water with your saline solution, which is just salt and baking soda, essentially. You squeeze it, you line it up to your nostril. Um, Doesn't matter which one you squeeze, it will like flush the sinuses. And once that's done, you line it up to the other nostril, you squeeze, and then it flushes in the other direction. And then you blow your nose and that's it. I've done this every single morning for years at this point, literally years. If I somehow like just get busy or something happens and I don't get to do my saline flush in the morning, I am fully aware of it. I can tell like my nose feels, even though I can still breathe, my nose will feel not right. I can tell that there's back like buildup in there. And so whenever that happens, it's not very often. I like flush my nose as soon as I remember, like, oh shoot, I never did that today. So it has made a noticeable difference in the quality of my life. And it's also just a really, really good way to keep your nose clean from pathogens and to prevent infection. Basically, the way it works is um, salt. Salt has all kinds of cool properties to it. But the way it works with like pathogens, like viruses, bacteria, is it works via osmosis. And... Hold on, I have this written down somewhere so I can describe it to you 
in a better in a better and more clear way. I'm just trying to find it. Where the heck is it? I am still here. Sorry, guys. Sorry about that. So the way osmosis works or the way um, salt water can help to protect you from viruses, bacteria, other pathogens. So you have the bacterial or the viral cell. You know, there's water in it. And osmosis is the process of where um, I'm trying to remember my biology, like the exact wording, but it's basically when something moves from a non-salty solution to a salty solution. So essentially what that means is that the salt water like dries up the bacterial or viral cells through osmosis. That's the gist of it. And that's like the totally layman uh, terms version of that because even though I took a million chemistry classes in biology when I was in acupuncture school, like that's not my area of expertise. So a lot of a lot of the stuff that I learned, I'm like, oh my gosh, I can't exactly remember how that works. So that's that's as best as I can explain it right now. But basically salt water helps to dry up and essentially kill pathogens, which is why when you do a saline flush in your nose, if you've got anything brewing in your nose, you know, like if you if you were exposed to somebody who was sick and you know you breathe you inhaled it and you've got like a bacteria in your nose a, like flushing it with salt will help to well one it'll like manually push it out but two it will also help to kill anything that might be lingering in there which is pretty cool um, you can take this a step further by in addition to the salt you can add things into your water when you flush your nose. You can add one to three drops of grapefruit seed extract, which is well known for its antimicrobial um, properties. Or you can also use a couple of drops of a golden seal tincture into your saline solution. Golden seal in particular is really good for killing I'm pretty sure it's viruses. I, well, it might be antibacterial and antiviral. Either way, you, like in addition to the salt that will like kill bacteria and viruses by drying drying the cells out, you can add other things into your solution that essentially do the same thing. They just take it up a notch. And this is a really good way to keep your nose healthy. One of your first lines of defense. So I highly, highly recommend doing a saline flush every single day. If you feel like you're starting to get sick or if you have really bad allergies and you're struggling, you can do the saline flush several times a day. So for me, I will do a saline flush once in the morning without fail. If I'm having a bad nose day or I'm starting to feel like I'm getting sick, I'll up it to maybe twice a day. If it's if I'm having a really bad allergy day, which doesn't happen very often because I do the saline flush every day, I will up it to three times a day. So you can play around with this, see what works for you. But either way, this is just a really good way to give your nose some much needed TLC, especially if you live in a dusty environment or if you're just exposed to a lot of germs. And any school teachers out there, people working in hospitals, or prisons. I don't know if any prison guards are listening to my show, but if you are, hi, welcome. And I definitely recommend you flush your nose. It would be good for you. And then we have the second part, which is keeping your mouth and your throat clean as well, or as clean as possible. So one of the best techniques that I like to use for keeping the mouth clean is something called oil pulling. Now, oil pulling comes from Ayurvedic medicine, which is Indian medicine. Um, I am fully trained in Chinese medicine. So Ayurvedic medicine is not my, 
not my area of expertise, but this particular technique I have learned from the little bit that I do know about Ayurvedic medicine, and I think it's awesome. What oil pulling is, you put a spoonful of oil in your mouth, you swish it around like, um, like a mouthwash for, you're supposed to do it for like 15 to 20 minutes. It feels like forever when you're doing it. And then when you're done, you just spit it out. What the heck is the point of that? I'll tell you. When you oil pull, well, first, the type of oil that you use does matter. Um, you can use coconut oil or you can use a like a sesame oil. Those are two really good oils. Um, coconut oil in particular, it contains something called lauric and capric acids. I'm never sure if I'm saying that right. I'm pretty sure it's capric. They, they contain acids that potentially kill viruses. And so when you, when you put the oil just straight in your mouth, and the way you're supposed to do this is first thing in the morning before you eat or drink anything. I mean, you can have water, but before you put any, anything else into your mouth, you oil pull. And the purpose of this is that, um, you know, when you first wake up, your mouth is full of your own natural bacteria and it's not, it hasn't been polluted by food particles basically. So when you oil pull first thing in the morning, you put this coconut oil in your mouth. Uh, Coconut oil is solid at room temperature and then it melts at higher temperatures. So at this time of year in the Phoenix area, your coconut oil is going to be liquid. (laughs) As it cools down, your coconut oil will solidify. And when that happens, you just like kind of gouge a little spoonful of it out. And when you put it in your mouth, it's like you chew on it and it's kind of weird, but then it turns into oil. So it feels a little bit weird in your mouth. And it just, at first it will feel kind of weird to have oil in your mouth that you don't do anything with except swish around. Like it does, it feels weird. It takes getting used to, but it's also really, really effective if you are starting to feel under the weather, especially if you feel like the like your throat is getting scratchy or sore. Whenever this happens to me, I'm oil pulling first thing, like first thing in the morning. I'm like, oh yeah, I got to do that. This is also a really good technique to use if you have gum inflammation or just like teeth issues. It can just help with your oral health overall. But yeah, all you do, you get up first thing in the morning, you take like a teaspoon of coconut oil, swish it around in your mouth for, if you can, 15 to 20 minutes, and then you just spit it out. And um, the, the acids that are naturally contained within the oil will help to kill any bacteria that might be, that your mouth might be harboring. It will also help to literally pull anything out from your, your gums in your mouth that doesn't belong there. Um, and the throat area too. So any anything that could be lingering that can potentially make you sick, oil pulling helps to pull it out. That's the whole purpose of it. And like I said, it's also good for gum inflammation and just mouth health overall. Once you're done with your oil pulling, you then top it off with gargling salt water. And this is, I mean, it's self-explanatory. I don't measure anything out. Like I just, I put some warm water into a cup. I add however, however much salt. I literally don't measure it. I just kind of eyeball it and then I'll, you know, stir it up till it dissolves. Um, and I'll put it in my mouth. I'll gargle it for a few seconds and then I'll spit it out. And I continue doing that until all of the salt water in my cup is done. It usually winds up being like, five to seven gargles and spits. It looks silly. Whenever my daughter sees me doing it, she always laughs and goes, mommy, what are you doing? Gargling salt water, honey. She's, oh, what's gargling? Cause she can't see what's happening. She doesn't understand gargling. It helps to keep me from not getting sick. Oh, okay. Yeah. Then after that, I'll just, if I have any on hand, I will, um, rinse my mouth out with a mouthwash containing essential oils. And that's it. 
So this is wellness hygiene. It's how to keep your nose, your mouth, and your throat as free and clear of bacteria and viruses as possible. And to, yeah, it's like the the equivalent of washing your hands. Like this is how you wash your nose and your mouth and your throat. And I love introducing this technique in the month of September and into October. You can do it every single day if you feel so called. Um, like the whole process, the flush your nose, oil pull, gargle, mouthwash. And I have found this to be super, super useful, especially if I am already starting to feel crummy. I start doing this. I have I up my vitamin D, which we talked about last episode. Um, I'll make a pot of immunity soup, which I'm going to talk about immunity soup in two weeks. And I just try to get more rest. And it works. Like it, it's very, very rare that I actually get sick when I'm doing all of these things. So there you go. That's Wellness Wednesday for today. Wellness hygiene. I hope it helps. I hope that you guys learned something. And hopefully this was a nice practical episode for you. You can just take this information and just start applying it in your life. Like today, you probably already have this stuff in your house. You might need to buy a Nasopure but they sell them at Sprouts. They sell them on Amazon. Super easy to get a hold of them. They even come with the saline packets. So all you need to do is just add the distilled water and then just start using it and notice how much better that you feel and how much easier it is for you to get through sick season. Thanks so much, guys. And I will catch you on